What's going on, Dodgers Nation? We are back again today with another iteration of the DN Roundtable. I think this is number 10. Yeah. It's a milestone. That's a really big moment it's for a you big guys. Birthday. So because this is number 10, if I still have to introduce these guys, where have you been? Living under a rock? We've been doing this for, uh, I guess, 10 weeks now. Has it really been 10 weeks? Listen, man, time, time is a, Time's a son of horrible bitch goddess. <laughs> it's not good. Guys, over there at the end, we got Clint Pusillas, host of the Blue Heaven podcast, co-host of the Blue Heaven podcast, along with myself. Every Monday night, 7 o'clock-ish, give or take, depending on the time, the place, the year, whatever it is. Mr. Eric Ulo over there, host of the 3 Up, 3 Down. And Doug. You guys know Doug. I don't have to tell you anything about Doug. Face of the franchise, star of the show. Always good stop, to see Doug, guys. Stop. Pay him to say that. Legend. Pay him to say We're that. We're at a weird point in the season. Things are happening. Pets' heads are falling off. Guys are hurt. Things are getting a little bit weird. But Cats and dogs living together. We're also getting to a point where guys are starting to get healthy again, possibly coming back pretty soon. We might see Clayton Kershaw in San Francisco in the weekend that is coming up ahead of us as this is being recorded. But the good news is the Dodgers do have a pair of guys that have pitched exceptionally well in the starting rotation. One of them, I would just like to point out, myself, all of you, <laughs> agreed, was going to be very good this year in Tony Gonsolin. I did not think he was going to be this good this year. Tyler Anderson, I think Eric had said like he was going to be pretty good this year. No one saw that coming. No one saw what he's doing uh, happening. Yeah. But it is. So my question to you guys, because I'm very excited about the All-Star Game coming up. I'm very excited about the fact that it's in L.A. Of these two guys, do you think that either of them end up being an All-Star? Do none of them make the All-Star team? Do both of them make the All-Star team? And if they do, how many more good starts do they have to have in order for them to get there? Eric, because you have so much faith in Mr. Tyler Anderson, I'm going to start off with you. I'm going to say one of them makes it, and I think it's going to be Tony Gonsolin. I love me some Tyler Anderson. He's a, he's a wonderful man. I love the changeup. I love what he's done so far. He's got a lot of wins. That's, My man! that's not important at all. But, uh, look, I, I think... The voting public. I think it's just, I think it's just <laughs> one. I think it's going to be Tony Gonsolin. He probably needs to have a couple more nice outings to do it, but I'd be pretty shocked if both of them make it. I think Tyler Anderson is probably pitching a little above his means right now, although I still love him. Above his means. Wow. I don't think he'd like to hear that from you, his biggest, his number one fan. <laughs> yeah, you're not big on the combio? I love his combio. I love Jay hair too. Listen, combio for me, because I'm going to take over Go now. Ahead, you take I over. feel like uh, both know. However, there is something, much to the chagrin of a few people here at this panel, there is something about pitcher wins influencing, especially a manager. Uh, to to because it's all what players and managers who pick the pitchers who go. You don't player or our fans don't get to vote for the pitcher to make the All Star team. So if you're uh, looking at a guy with a real low ERA, two and a half like Tyler Anderson, and leading the league in wins, there's a chance he makes it there. But Tony Gonsolin is leading the league in ERA. He's been uh, right there leading the league in wins. He's six and zero as of the time of recording. He's pitching later today. Uh, is going to throw up another gym in Chicago. I think Tony's the Tony's going to be the guy. Tyler Anderson, he's been good in the past. Maybe. I don't know. Was that an answer? It's g- Can close I enough on this one. An yeah, please do, Doug, because I was literally looking forward to that before you were hijacked. Because for me, I think when you look at his scoreless inning streak, it's going to be Tyler Anderson, or as I call him, Cy Anderson, Tyler Cy. the outs creator. You want to talk about wins? I'm a, not a big wins guy at all. I think they're meaningless in today's Major League Baseball, but he's also first in wins, first in the league in K to walk ratio, first in walks per nine. This guy is going out there and he's getting the job done. To me, Tyler Anderson is like that substitute teacher that you really love and you want him to stay on to be the permanent teacher, right? He's the guy that's gone in there, gotten the job done. You see that deceptive delivery. I almost want to stutter when I say his name, like Tyler Anderson, when he released it. I just think the job he's done in the narrative, a guy that came into the season, he was supposed to be a guy that piggybacked off Tony Gonsolin in the start. Now he's put the Dodgers on his back this season. So to me, Tyler Anderson, when you look at the scoreless hitting streak, when you look out, he's performed, he deserves to be an all-star this season. Mr. Duck. Mr. Duck. Mr. I got call him Cy Anderson. That's good. I don't think he's winning any Cy Young Awards this season or any season if we're being depends completely on honest but depends on the wins of course it depends on the sweet, wins guys sweet wins lately it seems like dave roberts is making right some decisions that have not necessarily sat well with fans has not sat well with me probably hasn't sat well with you guys on a lot of different ones uh we can point to a chicago series for that but your los angeles dodgers still have a lot of wins right now they're still very much on track to be first place in the nl west still very much on track to win more than 100 games my question to you guys, to you, Doug, specifically, is Is Dave Roberts doing a good job or is the roster doing what it was built to do? 
Well, like I said, you know I rock with Doc for the most part, but he has kind of made some moves of late that have been suspect. You saw he got outmanaged by Buck Showalter. He didn't either know that there was the six-run rule when he tried to have Zach McKinstry pitch, and you saw Buck in the dugout saying five. He clearly knew the rule. Or were they just trying to pull a fast one knowing that JT pitched the previous year? Also early in the year when you saw against the Phillies with Hanser Alberto trying to lay down that bun twice. I mean, I think there's just some questionable decisions. And then last night, you saw Tony La Russa versus Dave Roberts, and you go with DFA David Price coming out there, and they make the switch to have A.J. Pollock. And Pollock, you know, he's like a potluck because he always brings it, especially against the Dodgers yesterday. And then he saw he gets that big hit. So I think right now, when it comes to Dave Roberts, if the Dave slander, they have what they want. They have some ammo as far as bad decisions they can point to. And then you also look at his record in close games, one-run mm-hmm. games, 6-17 and 17 in extra innings games starting from the beginning of last season. But also, since the beginning of last season, more wins than any team, too. So that's just kind of this team's MO. They slug to win. It's proven that when you outslug your opponent, you increase your chances of winning by a lot. But right now, I think that Dave Roberts has just not, has been, it's not been a good week. I'm not saying you go yeah. Joe Madden him or anything like that. <laughs> (laughs) but hasn't been good for Doc of late. So you're talking about uh, Dave and what he's been able to do over the past couple of years. I think you and I have agreed initially really bad bullpen management. Last year seemed like a step in the right direction Mm -hmm. for him in terms of bullpen management. Do you think he's maybe taken a step back in that this year so far? Or is that based sheerly off of what's available to him? I mean, I think a good part of it is what's available. It's been a drastic change from him not having Kenley Jansen at the back of the bullpen there. He's he's had that guy for all of his Dodger uh, tenure as manager. But guys, uh, they're not getting it done. We talked earlier this week, I think. I mean, Bruce Dark Gretterall has been leaned on heavily this season. He's not getting the job done. And uh, the guys uh, who are missing, you know, you have Dustin May coming at some point. But if you're missing somebody like Blake, uh, Blake Trinan, you're going to put Doc, Doc in a really tough spot. And he's still trying to piece it together, still trying to figure it out. They got pretty lucky last year in a similar situation. Uh, you know, it's funny. You're talking about like the last week for Dave has been – been pretty funny because last week we did the grades and we're all pretty high on Dave and then he, he let us down pretty hard but uh, whatever your question was that's my answer that's a really good answer to my question that you didn't know for sure yeah S- sticking on that bullpen <laughs> theme some of those bad decisions like I said have been with the bullpen and things yeah. have happened and things have not gone really well especially in this past week so if you're looking at the bullpen now let's say by playoff time the guys we know are going to be healthy the guys we know are going to be back are going to be back in there Who does not make it onto this playoff bullpen roster? Eric, I'm going to start with you. Of the current guys, who is not going to be a part of the picture come playoff time? This pains me to say, but it's it's Phil Bickford for sure. And I love Bickford. Bickford's my guy. I love my giant dinosaur. I love that, uh, you know, born in Ventura, allegedly according to baseball reference. Uh, But look, he's been in AAA. He did not look good last night. I mean, granted... You know, one of those is probably an out if they're not in the shift, which gets us back to Dave Roberts, but that's a whole other situation. But it's probably Phil Bickford who's not on this postseason roster as a reliever. Before the season, I said this was Phil Bickford's regression season. And uh, I hate that I'm right about that, but everything about his peripherals and about mm-hmm. what he throws and his pitch mix tells you it's probably was a one-year type of deal and a good situation yeah. that he was put into. And I think we talked, uh, like, spring training, try to trade this guy as soon as you can. He's been fine. He's got, it's very Victor Value. Gonzalez 2021-ish. Yeah, there you like, go. Was and, that real? It's like, I don't know if that it's was kind of real. a mirage, right? And that's yeah. kind of how bullpen, that's how bullpen pieces, pieces are. are. They're volatile yeah. from year to year. And that's why you don't see Andrew Freeman giving up high prospects for relievers because they use you on a lot of team control. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's the reason why, too. Phil Bickford, yeah, I hope he's not do, the odd man do out. Do you have a guy that you think is going to be the odd man out come, uh, come playoff time? I mean, can we talk about uh, David Price? Is he included? Because, <laughs> I mean, David Price, I will David pick Price you up right now. Out of the I, I <laughs> look, I think that David Price can still be elite pitching in the KBO. Not in Major God League damn. Baseball. I think David Price, at this point of his career, he's a guy that just struggles. He doesn't have it anymore. I said a few weeks ago he's the Luau Dang of this Dodgers team. Sheesh. Now he's looking like the Carl Malone. He's looking like oh. the Shaquille O'Neal with the Celtics, right? He just doesn't have it at this point in his career. It's no fault to him because he's very professional. I've seen him in the clubhouse all smiles. The guys love him, but he just, he just doesn't have a role. It's like putting a square peg into a round hole in this team. He just doesn't have a role. And unfortunately, I think that, look, while we say is what must be done eventually should be done immediately and you should either find a trade partner for him mm-hmm. take on some of that salary eat some of that salary get a low-level prospect or you got a dfa david price and look at this it's point coming. 
that's just how it is. And, like, I mean, they should play the prices Right drop the dun 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 every time he enters the game. Because, like, like, I know he hasn't been that bad, but he just doesn't have a role on this team. I just think that he won't be on this Pope season the, roster. The role part, too. I mean, think of back to, think back to just before he, he was activated from the long stint on the COVID IL. He was like, I don't even know what I'm doing here, essentially. Like... Do you want to pitch well? Like, are you going to feel confident if you're coming into work and they're like, eh, we don't kind of need you today? Yeah, you know? exactly. You're, you're good to go? You uh, can stay home. And he was the Mookie tax. <laughs> yeah. He served his purpose. He yeah. was the Mookie He's tax. He's Carl Crawford. He, Lo- there he, he is the Carl second Crawford. iteration of Carl yeah. Crawford. Perfect, Love perfect. David Price. Great human, great dude. No spot on this team. He's not going to like to hear that. But I don't <clears> think he makes it past the All-Star game, by I the don't way. think he makes it through the trade deadline. There's I very, think when Kershaw comes back, possibly, you know, <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's mean, something to that there because I think they will go with the six-man rotation yeah. for a little bit, so there might be something there. Speaking of guys who are struggling big time and down bad, Cody Bellinger had a decent enough May to have Dodgers fans have some hope, feel alive, feel like things were headed in the right direction, but has since, uh, you can't even really come back, you can't even call it come back to earth because he wasn't good. He was just, compared to his last season, significantly yeah. better than what he was doing. But 520 OPS this month, uh, I'm not calling him useless at the plate because that just seems mean. But right now, are we getting last year's Cody? And is just that who he is, Eric? Is that who we're just going to have for the rest of forever for Cody Bellinger? I think Cody Bellinger is, is going to be Jason Hayward for the rest of his career, honestly. I think he's a premium glove. I think he's a premium athlete. I think he's a great guy. I think he says a lot of the right things. I think he's very professional, but he's just not good at the plate. And especially in this day and age, when you have all these great relievers coming in, you have stuff. I mean, everyone knows your book so well, especially with Cody Bellinger. You talk about a high variance player. Bellinger is the example of like his, his ceiling is MVP Babe Ruth and his floor is the second worst offensive player in the, in the league by WRC+. Plus. <laughs> so, look, I like Bellinger, but I, I just think it's I think he's going to be a lifetime 220, 230 hitter, maybe 250 with some pop and some great wheels, and that's just who he is. As the Good luck, Scott Boris. <laughs> resident Cody Bellinger hater in the building, is there any reason that you should feel good about anything that he's doing right now? Or I'd hopeful? Say, I wouldn't say hater. I just... You're sipping on that Cody Bellinger hater raid for sure. Listen, listen. I I knew in 18 he was going to be this up and down dude all all of his career. You've seen these type of dudes. Win an MVP the next year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Out of spite. On on the power of of a month and a half of great, (laughs) way above anybody's league uh, baseball. And then he came back down to earth and hit, what, 280, 275 for the rest of the season. We would kill to have that guy for sure. Um (laughs) This is just who Cody is, man. This is who he is. He's he's part of a group of Dodgers that are not performing up to their uh, their standard, up to their means. We're seeing it with JT. We're seeing it with I mean Will Smith at the moment, but also at the same time, this might be like you're saying, like you guys are saying, you know, this might be who Cody Bellinger is. He's providing value in that he's showing up to work. He's playing good to great, to mediocre, to plus defense in center field. He's, he hasn't been a major problem. He has not been a major black hole for this lineup right now. He's providing what, what the team needs, especially when you got people like Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner at the top to, to carry everything. But one of him and JT or Will Smith, people need to get it going a little bit. And uh, I'm looking at Cody. Cody's got to do something uh, big real soon it's kind of wild to think that there's four or five guys not playing nearly up to their potential just in the starting lineup alone and you still have the record that we have right now and are pretty much on track to win the west thank you considered thank you mookie thank you freddie thank you freddie god even he's on a slide and it still feels like we're still doing much better and trey too i mean that's another guy you got to consider finally guys those angels (laughs) back at it again they just lost their 13th consecutive game as of this podcast or show recording they fired their manager, which, you know, everybody has their opinions about that. Angels fans seem to f- convince that that was the move. That's what they should have done. That's what they needed to happen, apparently, because if you fire your manager, everything gets better. Yep. All three Angels fans agreed. That yeah, yeah. The they were all like, okay. that's what we should be doing, guys. Congratulations. So with that in mind, Got let's them. just say for a second, they should. They won't, but they should. The Angels should really start cleaning house top to bottom. They really should. They should start rebuilding their farm system. They should start actually having people in a future. They don't have any of that. No. They, don't have, they don't have a present. They don't have a future. They have a past, and it was 20 years ago, and it's been a minute. Remember when Bartolo was young? <laughs> that was their past. Guys, 20-game winner. Bartolo. So considering what you would have, <laughs> considering what you would have to give up, con- include assets, include what you would have to give up, as well as current contracts and situations, you get the choice. 
one Shohei Otani and one Mike Trout. Who are you going with to trade for? I mean, Shohei fills two roles. Mike Trout, Michael Trout is a fan, phenomenal player, one of the best of all time. He's a snake bit when it comes to the postseason, as is Otani. But, I mean, Otani, you get a pitcher, you get an elite pitcher, and you get somebody who can DH, somebody who can stuff in the outfield. Give me Otani. Showtime in L.A., the real L.A. It's going to cost. He's going to cost a lot, especially Mike with Trout's the contract that he has. Costing. Yeah, I know. With the contract that Shohei has and the prospect capital that that's going to cost alone. Ooh, oh, I thought this was a free trade, like a free acquisition. Just straight up. You just yeah. take him. Yeah, yeah, he's mine. Let me have him. So I would say, yeah, it is the Anaheim Pangels, the way they're running things over there in Orange County. But to me, if I had to pick between the two, Mike Trout's done it for longer. We know that if he can stay on the field, that he's going to produce at the plate. There's no question about it. But when you talk about this market in Los Angeles, it's MLB the Shohei. There's no question about it. I'm going Shohei Otani because, look, if you had the DH in the National League, you would have probably picked the Dodgers back when he originally came to Los Angeles. And he's built for this market. I mean, when you talk about the fact that we don't know where Walker Buehler and Julio Urias are, is he a potential frontline starter? I mean, you talk about a guy that we're going to be talking about hundreds of years from now. We're probably going to be talking about Mike Trout as well. But I think he's built for Los Angeles. He's built for this mega market. He would be a superstar. And I think he has the personality to kind of embrace it. Whereas I don't think Mike Trout necessarily does. Even though he's a great player, I I just don't think the the lights in the and by the way it's not at los angeles and anaheim right it's the the los angeles angels of anaheim of california of united states of galaxy of universe LLC, that disneyland yeah, yeah. so mm. the fact is to give, give me shohei otani all day i like how you're saying you know the more marketable guy is obviously shohei otani the guy who doesn't speak english versus the guy who speaks fluent english that's how unmarketable mike trout is because the dude just is just like comes in does yeah. a job goes home doesn't say a and word about anything other yeah. than the weather and the eagles for and some reason and Stephen a smith is gonna be punching air here yeah. in that one right because he thinks Go that if you mike. don't speak english you're not marketable exactly but, and you yeah. can be another, absolutely another, the most marketable player on the planet as long as you have that talent that goes with it another boy, great thing i love about shohei too is the rich uh japanese history that the dodgers have had you got nomo you got uh, Hiroki Kuroda, you got Takashi Saito, yes. you got, got Kenta, Kenta <laughs> yeah. Maeda. I mean, to get you have the Japanese in there, Garden from the Dodgers one, Secrets video. Dodgers Secret <laughs> video. Look at that; it's up somewhere <laughs> over here. But uh, you know, that would mean I think that would mean so much to to Japan as well, like to the the, the baseball fans, Japan, like to get him. In L.A., like this is the team that Hideo Nomo pitched for. That means a lot. I'm honestly still shocked that he didn't play for the Dodgers. Like, I'm still shocked exactly. about it. Because in my mind, I was like, that's a pretty clear-cut decision. If is he a if Boris guy? Uh, couldn't tell you, to be honest with you, because Boris has, owns everybody in, in the league. And how somehow. many managers? Is it like four managers now, right? Is that four? <laughs> I mean, he's played for more managers than I had at Cheesecake Factory, right? I mean, four managers, and he needs some stability. And I think that Shohei Otani. <laughs> Has he already played for four? Yeah. I think it's four it's now, right? He started with Sosa. Yeah. He started with Sosa. Oh, my Sosa, God. He yeah. started with Sosa. So he needs some stability, and I think Those that if days. he wants to win, and I think if you're the, the game, if you're Major League Baseball, too, you want to see him either. I, my whole, I always wanted to see Mike Trout in Chicago or Philly. And then Shohei Otani, either New York or L.A. You need the big man. stars, the big markets. And you mentioned Hideo Nomo. When I was a kid, he was my favorite player. Never once did I say, oh, man, what is he saying? You know, like that never. Right. You know, I was obsessed with Hideo Nomo. I never said, like, man, I wish I could have a conversation with this guy. Hey, no, you Tommy know, like, got him to say the most yeah. important thing. I bleed blue. I bleed blue. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We should play, play out a clip. <laughs> by yeah. the way, Tommy, by the, the <laughs> best translator. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Mike Trout... Playing for the Phillies would be absolute career poison. People know of Mike Trout because he's the greatest player. Did you guys know Bryce Harper won the MVP last year? We don't really care. People, it feels like baseball doesn't care about Mike Trout anymore. Nobody cares really about Nick Castellanos unless he's hitting a home run like in a, in a sus spot. But at least you got to you you be a fun, marketable player yeah. who plays for a fun and marketable team. Otherwise, the you're Phillies nothing. Are not. The Phillies are not a fun no. team. They're not a marketable team. And they have a fanatic. Imagine that. Somebody was like, imagine getting fired by the Phillies and the Fanatic is at the end of the table just looking disappointed. You know what I think would change the Angels? I think that Steve Ballmer should find a way to buy the Angels. I think that... Get they're already the Clippers. Of, of yeah, they're the Southern Clippers, Clippers right? right? So. Yeah. Why not? I think you can't do that, too, because like, I remember when Mark Cuban was going to try to buy the Dodgers. They wouldn't have an NBA and MLB owner, but I digress. I feel like we derailed uh, Eric's opportunity. Big time. Eric, bring some... us home, man. Get, get us back on track. Bring us home. Mike Trout. Show he's, he's going Trout. I feel Trout. Prisoners of the moments here. Otani's had a season and a half of good production versus the he gets the MLB the show time. cover and all of a sudden you guys are all about Shohei Otani I mean look Shohei Otani is Bo Jackson he is we're never going to see this ever again show knows but Mike Trout is Emmett Smith 
and I want I want that production. I want that guy who I've seen it year after year no, after, year after year after <laughs> year. Uh, Rafael Nadal versus some Andre McEnroe? Agassi, maybe Mac- maybe some McEnroe, yeah, maybe some McEnroe yeah. in there. But look, it's Mike Trout. It's Mike Trout every day of the week, twice on Sunday. Look Mike at the Trout's age, though. I mean, like I mean, I think you could honestly say that Mike Trout's probably peaked. I mean, four seasons over a thousand OPS. He's been fantastic. But how much look, baseball did he play last year? What like are the what are the games? what are the yeah. odds? Yeah. What are the odds that Otani is going to still be pitching and DHing in four or five years? Well, I will say, low. I will it's say, very, worth, very, it's very worth low. the risk. It's uh, worth the risk considering you guys, that you he's guys a are, once you, in a sport player. You guys really. are going to tell you, you are dead wrong. He's he's a, you, guys are, you, guys are, you guys are selling tickets. Yeah. Okay, you guys are going for the entertainment product of Shohei. I'm going for the guy who's the next Ted Williams. He's OPSing 990, by the way, Mike Trout is. So he's not having how many? How many? And he had like an 0 for 30 streak or something. This is no not on Mike Trout's And he's got a three war already. Yeah, no, he is the war guy. How many wins does he have? <laughs> Three, I guess. I don't, know. I don't know how that works. We're going to end the conversation there because Keep we are going to get into the... a fist fight. Make sure you drop it in the comments. Let us know who you'd rather have. That's the takeaway from this. Who would you rather have? Mike Trout, Shoya Watani. Consider the price. Consider the cost. Consider subscribing to our YouTube channel because then you get stuff like this all the time. This is the 10th week of the DN Roundtable. Hit that subscribe button down below. We'd appreciate it. Doug would appreciate would it. Love it. Keeps us going would all love year that. long. It's great with the channel. 10 DN Roundtables. Guys, we appreciate you for being here with us and we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.